Hey guys, it's Wolf Wengler. Here's the second installment on the crush sleeve replacement for my eight and three quarter inch Mopar center section. Well, one thing led to another and I got the case apart and I figured as long as I had it apart, I might as well paint it. So here's coat number one, um, zinc chromate primer. This stuff is the best. And then coat number two will be a black paint that Mercury Marine makes called Phantom Black, the best black, the most enduring paint that you will ever And then here's the case painted in that black Phantom Black. And here's the pinion with the Mopar style crush collar and the yoke sitting on the top of it. When you tighten the nut on the yoke, it pushes it down on that top bearing and so that it crushes this collar, this is a crush sleeve that's on here, and that gives you the right dimension, that gives you the right distance between the two bearings, between the upper bearing and the lower bearing. Well, once that nut is off, you can put it back together with the same crush sleeve, but you don't really know. Or you can get a new crush sleeve and then you need 260 foot pounds of torque on the nut to crush the new sleeve. That's not a good option, especially with the threads, particularly because of the threads and how I've had to clean them up here because of the last nut that was screwed up. So they make a crush sleeve replacer that's a cone that goes in here with a series of shims and when you put that together, it only takes a little over 100 foot-pounds of torque. So that's what I'm doing. I've ordered one of those crush sleeves, and I'll have that tomorrow. And um, we'll put this together with a nut that doesn't require so much torque. I just like to be overly cautious. Okay. Here you can see the threads on the pinion that I've cleaned up with a little file. Um, so I've got the differential apart, and I'll show you how this all works. In the case, there's a race over on this side for one bearing, and on the inside, there's another race for another bearing. And the pinion shaft here goes through the case so that this bearing sits on the inside of the case, and then when the pinion comes up out of the top, see if I'll hold this up for a minute, so that the pinion comes from the bottom of the case, uh, one bearing rests on the race on the inside, and then there's another bearing that goes over the top over here. Now this particular bearing has been hogged out a little bit so I can put it on, take it off for assembly. But the distance between this bearing here and this bearing here is critical, and it's established with either this shim this crush collar that is on the pinion shaft when you assemble it and you tighten it down to a certain amount of torque, 260 foot pounds, or you can use a collar replacer with a series of shims and you get that to the right um, dimension between the two bearings by tightening down this, bear, this um, yoke on the top You get that to the right dimension by tightening the yoke on the top and measuring how much force it takes to rotate that as you're tightening it. And that's measured in um, inch pounds, 12 inch pounds equals one foot pound. So getting this drag just right on this yoke is critical and it's why you have to take it apart and put it together a couple of times with that um, replacement collar in there and that's why I've got this bearing set that you can just take it in and out. Ultimately I'll put the old bearing back in here and that gets pressed on the shaft. So this needs to set up on my vise here. I have my vise from outside blocked up on some blocks in here because this is going to lay over this way with the yoke with the yoke in the vise so I can tighten the nut and draw that pinion bearing, that pinion shaft um, together between the two bearings. So it's a little bit of a gyro gearless kind of 
production here, but it'll work. That just needs to hold the yoke while I tighten it. And this only has to get tightened um, to uh, 100 and a little over 100 pounds, 115, maybe 120, I'm not sure, but um, I have to look that up. But anyway, it's not 260 pounds. I don't want to put that much torque on this cleaned up threads here. So that's where we're at. And the first thing is getting that pinion in there with the right amount of preload on it so that when you turn the pinion shaft, it doesn't spin freely, but it doesn't turn too tightly. And you do that with an inch-pound torque wrench, measuring how much torque it takes to turn that shaft without anything attached to it, just the shaft in between those two bearings. Preload. That's how you set your pinion preload depth. This is the crush sleeve that came on the unit. And here's the fancy handy-dandy machine crush sleeve that goes on there with one of these shims, or a package of these shims. So that's where I'm at now. Trial and error, fitting the shims, tightening it up, seeing how much play you got on the yoke, coming back together, taking it apart. So here's the procedure. I started out with a 70 um, shim pack, 55, 40, I'm down to uh, 29 now. And you put the shims, over here on top of this new spacer and then they sit underneath the bearing now this isn't the actual bearing i'm going to use this bearing's been hogged out a little bit so that it slides on and off because this is take it apart put it together a half a dozen times maybe more and i don't want to have to press the bearing out every time so that's the way that works let me see i don't know if i can Find a place for my phone here. So that's the way that works. I got another shim pack in here. I set the pinion gear up here in place. I got a couple of blocks of wood that I sit underneath it so I can set this up nicely. So here's the gear in place. Those two shims, you can see them there. I go back to my little mark here on the spline and my mark here on this one. Line them up, two marks are lined up. Cup side down, you can see the cup in that washer. And then um, I'm back on here with this 7 8 14 thread. I'm run that down a little bit. I can't do this with one hand. Run the nut down a little bit with my impact and then I'm gonna So I'm down to uh, 18 and a 15. 18 and a 15, 33. Nope, way too loose. So we're down to 31 thousandths here on this little baby. Okie doke. There's the pinion mark. There's my other mark. There they're lined up. That's too loose. So, 31 and 29 are gone for 30. Here's where we're at right now. I've got 30 thousandths in here. So this 
still too loose. A 9,000 and a 16,000 shim makes this turn just right. You can't spin it like before. So how do you know how tight this needs to be? I want this to be 12 inch pounds. That's three quarters of one foot pound. So you can use an inch pound torque wrench to do this. If you have one, swing it around and measure the torque as it moves. So three quarters of a pound at one foot. So here's a little measuring device. This little thing has three quarters of a pound of washers on the end of it. It's one foot long. If I take this as a frame of reference, but it's pretty easy when you're comparing something, one thing to another right next to it. You can turn this and I can move right up here and turn this and they feel really close close enough for what we're doing. So that's a poor man's inch pound torque wrench. Well, I've got the pinion in, mounted, shimmed, the new bearing is in, or the old bearing is in, and um, a new seal. I will lube the front of the seal, and then some RTV around these splines of the pinion yoke. So this here is pretty much the whole point of this video, is sealing the splines on your pinion yoke. So I've got everything set up here. I've got the um, rear end screwed down to a pile of blocks so I could get enough arm leverage on it to torque it. And the backlash is, let me get zeroed here. Backlash is about six, here over six. If I go way back, seven. I'll live with that. Let's put some gear paste on it and see what it looks like for a pattern. You got the gear scooped up. Right in the middle of the gear. Can you see it? Okay, all buttoned up. Slider in the car here. So here's the setup I use. It's got a little notch that clears one rib on uh, the pumpkin here, but it's easy enough to jack into place. So there we go, got to nut it up now. Well, here you go together and I uh, had it out, ran around the block and everything's good. But here's the way this went. I started out to replace a universal joint that um, was 24 years old and starting to get dry. Took the joint out, took it to the local Napa store. All they could find was a joint that had a uh, Zerk fitting, a grease fitting in it. And I didn't want one with a grease fitting in it because that's where they break. So um, Spicer made a joint, but they couldn't find it. They sent me over to um, Rocky Mountain Truck Supply. Um, they found the joint, ordered it, said it'd be in the next day. Next day, it didn't come, missed the truck. The following day, something happened. The truck broke down, and that was a Friday. Didn't get anything until Monday. Supposed to be in first thing Monday morning, but it didn't show up Monday morning. So by Monday afternoon, it was supposed to be there, and it didn't show up Monday afternoon. I went to O'Reilly Auto Parts, talked to them. They said, we'll have it here in an hour, and they did. Um, so I got the joint, put the joint in, but when I put the joint in, I noticed that there was grease around the um, pinion yoke nut, and there was something that was a problem. So I decided to take this thing apart. Um, wound up having to order a compression collar from Dr. Diff. Um, that was four days. 
Then I found the leaky axle seal uh, to order that. A couple more days. Um, I got the went to take the nut off of the pinion. Threads were messed up on the nut. I had to cut the nut off with a Dremel. Then the pinion threads I had to rework with a file. Needed a couple of O-rings to seal the uh, bearings on the outside of the axle shaft. Nobody around here had a Dash 146 O-ring. Um, I found a couple online, $12 a piece. That's absurd. So Granger had them, a uh, 10-pack for $3.66. But they didn't have them in their Denver store. They said they had a bunch of them in Fort Collins. That's a half hour, 40 minutes from here. I drove up to Fort Collins. A guy in Fort Collins says, no, we don't have any in stock here. Um, we'll have to get them for you. I said, but your website says you had them. I talked to you. He said, it doesn't matter. We don't have them. He said, they're in Kansas City. We can get them here on Tuesday, and then we can send them out to you. I said, can't you have Kansas City send them to me direct? He says, oh, yeah, we could probably do that. So they sent them out of Kansas City. I was supposed to have them Tuesday. They showed up Wednesday. Wednesday, I get everything. I go to put everything back together. And I've got two um, gaskets, Felpro gaskets for this differential. Um, both of them are old and brittle. Had to order another gasket. There goes another half a day. So this project has taken um, three weeks to change the uh, universal joint and um, put a little bit of RTV on the splines of the um, pinion yoke. Three weeks, that's my sorry story.